thank you, Professor Stepanovich, and thank you to Bradent and Brightstar for inviting me in these amazing locations. And uh, I would like everything, everybody, to come in uh, to my presentation. When uh, Mr. Igor Rosman invited me in this Congress, he gave me a little bit difficult uh, topic because he, he, asked me, he asked me to speak about the management of the narrow spaces and aesthetic area. And that's a problem that is not so frequent in the population because if we look at uh, the statistics, we can see that it regards a small part, a small slice of population, but often they uh, includes, uh, they include the uh, young people causing uh, aesthetical and uh, psychological problem. And as uh, Dr. Ristich showed before in his amazing uh, presentation, uh, it always represents uh, a great challenge for the, the, for the dentist in any case. Uh, despite the type of treatment that we decide to, uh, to use on our patient, the steps of the treatment, we can resume the steps in, the, in these four, uh, sorry, we can, we can resume the steps in these four phase. The first and the most important is the orthodontic phase. I, I'm not an orthodontic, I won't speak about the orthodontic phase, but it's the most important because we need uh, enough space to host a good aesthetic rehabilitation. And then we, we always, in, in any case, we have to manage the hard and soft tissue and uh, mm, move into uh, the uh, temporary phase and the final rehabilitation. Uh, it's very important to uh, have a good orthodontic therapy because uh, if we didn't get enough space to, to host our, uh, our tooth, it's quite impossible to manage this, this kind of treatment. And uh, uh, we have to consider also that uh, moving uh, and the entire part of the, of the teeth, uh, both the crown and the roots as well, it's not so easy. It's, uh, uh, we also must consider that the space that uh, we have to consider is not always the vestibular space, but it could be the palatal space because uh, often the palatal space is uh, um, narrower than the vestibular space, and, but our reconstruction must fit into this space, even vestibular or palatal. Many years ago, we, can, uh, we, uh, we could use a, a kind of a very classical kind of re rehabilitation, uh, like this case, the first case that I'm going to present. Uh, this uh, young lady who uh, had uh, two Maryland bridges uh, with a, a, a lot of complication uh, related, related to the bonding of uh, the Marion Bridges, and he asked for uh, a stable and definitive uh, rehabilitation, not considering the hypothesis, just the hypothesis of the dental implant. Uh, so in this case, we, the, the only option that we had is uh, a six, fix, uh, uh, six teeth fixed rehabilitation, uh, Moving from, uh, moving from the initial therapy, uh, hygiene therapy and uh, uh, soft tissue reconditioning, and then uh, management of the uh, soft tissue atrophy of the crest with a connectic tissue graft, and, and uh, still moving after six months to the final impression and the final rehabilitation with uh, a good aesthetic results that are uh, many years of uh, uh, after the of control after eight years it's quite stable it's the uh, the, pa the patient is happy of this kind of result but in my opinion it's no longer acceptable to uh, involve four sound teeth to rehabilitate two missing teeth and th we have to consider the the other two options that we have in uh, managing the narrow spaces and the first the first one is the 
uh, three units adhesive uh, bridges, uh, so-called Maryland bridges, uh, that in this case was the only options that we had because uh, if we look at the CT scan, we can uh, appreciate a, a huge atrophy uh, of the bone of the crest because uh, missing the, the, permanent, the permanent tooth, the, uh, the bone is not uh, stimulated to develop and then we, we often have uh, the, uh, this kind of situation and uh, the, the patient refused any kind of bone graft uh, and, uh, and, some, and some things like this. And she decided to, to have uh, uh, three unit adhesive bridges. Uh, even in this case, we uh, treated and we modified the soft tissue uh, shaping. And uh, at, the, at the end of the treatment, they say is the Marian bridge on the cast from the cast to the mouth. Uh, a little bit of information because these, uh, these are the pictures that we, uh, that we got at uh, the moment of the cementation when the, 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 the tissue are, uh, were, were sti still inflamed, but uh, uh, the situation became uh, better in the, in, the following, in the following days. But uh, how could, how is it reliable, this kind of treatment? Look at the, the, uh, the literature. And in the literature, uh, if we uh, look at the complications of the three unit adhesive bridges, we can uh, easily note and we can easily find that the major complication and the huge amount of uh, percentage of complication is the bonding of the three unit adhesive bridges. And uh, in minor com complication, complication are secondary carriers of, uh, um, of this kind of re rehabilitation. And then it's natural to consider another kind of, uh, uh, of rehabilitation, but uh, considering the narrow space that we have, we only ma could consider the, the hypothesis of mini implants. Uh, a comparison between the results, the long-term results of adhesive three unit bridges and the mini implants show us that the numbers and the results in uh, um, follow-up times up, of up to five years in any case are better with the mini implants instead of compare with, compare with the adhesive uh, fixed unit bridges but we have to consider other things because in the literature uh, we uh, often um, uh, there, there is uh, some uh, misleading uh, between uh, narrow, narrow implants and mini implants and, and this confusion was resolved in the 2007 with the glossary of uh, International Journal of Oral Maxillary Surgery, because the mini implants are uh, and have the specific features that are resumed in this uh, in this table. Uh, the diameter is below three millimeter; is not at three three point five millimeters like we can find in uh, some uh, papers that are was published with the title "Narrow Implants in." But these are, or mini implants, these are known mini implants, these are standard uh, implants, standard diameter implants. And uh, there are different features between mini and narrow implants. So we can easily consider that mini implants is, uh, at the moment, is a, a good option in treating the narrow spaces uh, pa um, patient and these are the, it's, a, it's a good example of this kind of concept because this, uh, this lady, this young lady uh, with two missing lateral incisors, uh, this is the, the, the picture of the end of the orthodontic treatment with two temporary Maryland bridges uh, that the, she, were, she wore at the moment of the, of the, of the picture. And uh, these two Maryland bridges, they bonded frequently. So 
she, she was scared of, den of dental hygiene. Um, she was scared of the bonding of the bridges because she came several times in, in, in our office for uh, reattach the, the temporary restoration. And then you can see the, the consequences of uh, uh, the poor oral hygiene with the uh, inflamed tissues. In, uh, in, uh, in uh, this case, we had to manage also the hard and the soft tissue as well. And uh, we performed a bone, a bone block graft on the left side and the xenograft on the, on the right side uh, in order to uh, get a good uh, volume of the, of the crest in order to get a good aesthetic result. And that's <clears throat> the situation. At the moment of the implant positioning, we got uh, a good volume of the, of the crest. We have our surgical template uh, on, in sight. And then we easily put two mini implants, 2.8 diameter um, implants with, uh, with the flapless uh, uh, approach because uh, we, uh, we checked the, 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 the amount of bond that we got by a CT scan, and uh, we easily can, uh, could, um, uh, could proceed with uh, a flapless procedures. And that's the uh, X-rays control, where we can uh, appreciate uh, the uh, very, uh, very ac accurate positioning of this implant because uh, this implant, one criticism that I could move to this implant that is a one-shot implant. You have one burr to position it, this implant. You, can, you, ha you must uh, be uh, skillful in, uh, in the position of this implant because you, you don't have any kind of uh, possibility of mistake in positioning this, uh, in, uh, in preparing the, the, the alveolar, the implant, uh, al, the implant uh, site. And uh, that's the, the moment of the impression. The second temporary uh, in, uh, inserted for soft tissue conditioning. And that's the final result at the moment of, uh, of uh, application. And it is a control after two years. The oral hygiene is it isn't still uh, perfect, but the, the tissue are stable, the, the, the profile is good. And, and in my opinion, we, get, we got a good result, a good aesthetic result in, in this case. And that the X-rays control, the, where we can uh, appreciate the stable also the, of the soft, of the hard tissue and the bone. But also, in the, using the mini implants, we must keep in mind the concept of three-dimensional implant positioning because we must respect the distances between implant and teeth and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the level of insertion uh, of, of the implant in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, comparing with the, the, uh, the, 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 the teeth uh, the, that are uh, near to the implant side. And that's, uh, the, that's the consequence, that, that's the result of, uh, of using a normal standard implant instead of mini implants in, a, in an aesthetical side, the, instead of a mini implant. So you can see the very, negative result that the, in this case was, uh, was, get, was, was obtained uh, instead of uh, a good uh, soft tissue and the papilla reformation uh, in the uh, mini implants site. And uh, at this point, some questions about mini, the mini implants could be, uh, uh, could be done. And uh, the first and the most important, if are they if they are safe devices, and the literature show that uh, on uh, on 15, uh, 15 years of all of follow up, uh, the, this study was published by Jung in uh, 2012. Um, only two uh, screw were, were fractured uh, on, on on this time on that time, and uh, the the community success rate 
is 95%. It's quite similar to the normal diameter implant. And the, using, the use and the indication for this implant is like normal standard implants, fixed prosthodontic, immediate loading as well, and removal prosthesis. Uh, in, the, uh, in the literature, the, the use of mini implants is uh, especially considered for uh, overdenture uh, use, but uh, we can use also per fixed prosthodontic. The mini sky 2 of Bradent is, a, a, is an implant uh, indicated for fixed prosthodontic and also for immediate loading because like this case with uh, this, is, this is not a young lady this is a, a, an old lady who had a fracture of, uh, of this uh, lower incisor uh, very very narrow space uh, very difficult to, uh, uh, to, to, to treat this uh, the, the, the missing of the, 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 the the, the lack of this tooth, uh, the patient didn't want any, any kind of removal of prosthesis. And then that's the, that's the situation that the, the, there is a root fracture. The situation of the, of the uh, tissues are uh, quite good. The, 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 the bone is, is, uh, is safe, is uh, completely uh, conserved. And in this case, we decided to proceed with an immediate loading using a mini, a mini implants. One burr, one shot, very precise pre placement of the, of the implant. That's the implant just before the, its insertion. Position, like uh, Jose Calvo told ye yesterday, as lingual or as parallel as possible. That's the control. And at that, at that point, we, 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 t we took a uh, visual line, veneer, and we put on in the implant uh, this kind of abutment, the PEE cap K uh, abutment that uh, was prepared and adapted to the, the, to the space. And that's the, the, the try-in of the veneer, the conditioning of the veneer, and then the final try-in of the veneer and the final relining, re relining of, the, of the veneer. That's the result at the end of at the 15 days after the surgery. And that's the, the, the implant was integrated, the impression, and uh, this is the cast. And you can uh, re really appreciate the, the very thin spaces in between the, t the, the implant and the teeth, and that it was very hard, very, very difficult for the technician to uh, prepare a, a good abutment and to prepare a, a structure but not only this, to uh, put on this, uh, on this uh, core a ceramic reconstruction, but he reached in, uh, in, in his work, and that's the, the final result and the control after two years, and oh, three years, sorry. Uh, as I told before, the, mm, the major the critical point in using 2.8 implants could be the, uh, the, 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 the lack of mistakes. We, ha we haven't, uh, we haven't nothing possibility, no possibility to, uh, to, 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 to to mislead, to, uh, to, to make an error, to make a mistake in inclination of the burr. And then I really, uh, I'm I was very happy uh, of the introduction into the, into the market of the narrow 3.2 implants because 
uh, these are a, a good compromise uh, in, uh, to, to treat this kind of, uh, of, uh, of problem, this, this kind of clinical situation. And that's uh, the case. Uh, I'm, I apologize, this case is not complete because I, I had the, this implant on May and, and that's, it's in an advanced phase of, uh, of, uh, of treatment, but it's not, not completed. Uh, that's the final case that I'm going to show you. This is a 30 years lady with two, uh, uh, two, lateral, uh, two lateral incisors. Uh, they missed the permanent lateral incisors. Uh, sorry, she, she missed the permanent lateral incisors. And uh, we performed an immediate loading uh, procedure, an immediate loading approach. Uh, we extracted the, the teeth. controlling the spaces uh, available. In, uh, in the right side, we, we wanted to, uh, in, to, uh, to, to, to boost, to, to improve the, uh, the soft tissue uh, volume. And this kind of implant have the g gives us, give us the, the possibility to use two birds in preparing the the implant sides, so we have, we are more uh, comfortable in, uh, in preparing this implant, and that's the, the implant preparation. Here we perform a connected tissue graft. On the left side, we we didn't need it, we didn't need to do, to do it. That's the implant just before their placement. And at, this, at that moment, we put two abutments, and we took the impression with these two abutments. And that's the x rays control. And the technician uh, pressed on these two abutments the new, the, the real brand new material that in my opinion is going to be the real the real revolution on the dent on the abutment material and then in the future the BOHPP material and uh, we, we we put the abutment uh, 24 hours later the insertion of implant that is the situation 24 hours later, and uh, uh, this kind of material is very, it's incredible because the adhesion between uh, this material and the Titan is quite perfect and it has uh, a specific weight five or six fold lesser than uh, titanium and it uh, it means that the, the weight, the load over our implants is much lesser than using a standard titanium abutment. Not only, it is whitish. And in the statical sites, having a, a whitish abutment and the, uh, a light abutment, not zirconia abutment, Dr. Ristich maybe is, a, uh, is agree with me, uh, agree with me, uh, it's a very uh, key point in, uh, in, in success. So that is the situation at the, m the moment of uh, uh, temporary insertion, the first temporary insertion. That's a healing four months later. And that's the situation, the soft tissues, quite perfect. A little bit of, inf of inflammation here little bit of inflammation here, but uh, the, the patient was scared of uh, the, the, the immediate loading approach 
and so she was very prudent in uh, oral hygiene procedures. And that's the control, radiographic control. And at that, uh, that point, we put the second, uh, secondary temporary in composite temporary. And we can appreciate the transparency of the temporary and the whitish aspect of the, of the abutment. And uh, I really thank to Red and to Mr. Brem uh, to be maybe the unique brand, the unique company in the, actually in the, in the world of implantology who keep continuing in researching new solution and new materials for our dentists. And uh, really thank him and the brethren and everybody to, to be here and for uh, your attention. <laughs>